We're the Neon Night Stitchers. I'm Gail. I'm Mary. Thank you for joining us. If you're not already a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and help us out to grow our channel. I think Mary has some neon news for us today. <laughs> yes, here we go again. Today is Saturday, May 21st, 2022. In our last episode, we reported the body that was found in the barrel at Lake Mead. The very next week, a pile of bones were found in the sand in another area of the lake um, that used to be underwater. These discoveries have been covered in numerous media outlets around the region, um, but Friday, the New York Times had a story about it. The title is Bodies Pulled from Lake Mead Stir Ghosts of Wise Guys. The first paragraph says, it's the mob guy who went missing after skimming um, for the stardust. No, it's the lake resort manager hunted down by the Chicago outfit. Could it be a worker of a, of a biker gang muscling in on the mafia turf? Or maybe someone just fell off the boat after having one too many. Well, the last suggestion is highly unlikely because you don't fall into a lake, get shot, and accident, accidentally end up in a barrel. <laughs> to continue to quote from the New York Times, that article, at the time, um, it, which was the mid-70s to early 1980s, even as local authorities sought to downplay the influence of organized mob syndicates, mobsters from West from Midwest cities like Chicago, Milwaukee, or Kansas City, Missouri, wielded immense clout around Las Vegas. Today, the Mafia's role here in Vegas is considered insignificant, but nostalgia for the area of made men has emerged um, as a big money maker. So this is to be continued. The article also goes on to talk about all the mob-related history-driven activities you can participate in here. Um, a social media personality is offering a $5,000 reward to divers who find other remains um, in Lake Mead. <laughs> okay, so I'm sitting there, I'm telling Gail that I believe this is going to be a tri true crime Las Vegas show somehow. <laughs> i got to come up with stories behind all these bones and bodies they find. It certainly would have been on CSI Las Vegas if uh, <laughs> that series was still going. Yep. <laughs> Um, the theories abound regarding the remains in a barrel, but only time will tell um, the end of the story. The water level in the in Lake Mead keeps going down, so we're sure more will show. Yeah. I don't think I would want to go dive in there and look for bodies. Don't want to dive. Don't want to find bodies. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to find bodies. That's us. I don't yeah. want to find bodies. Yeah. <laughs> Although we do love a good mystery. Yes. So we will be following this story until we want read about it. <laughs> yeah. Until we hear a resolution, and then we'll probably bring that resolution to you. <laughs> what if it ends up as something so mundane and uninteresting? Hmm. Well, they'll make some. They'll spin it. They'll make it. They'll spin it. There you <laughs> Got go. Got something going I on. I like that theory. <laughs> All right. The Colorado Cross Stitcher is offering um, summer camp again this year. Yeah. Yay! It starts June first, and you can find the details on Sherry's Floss Tube 26A, and we'll post the link for you in our notes. Sherry has also posted a free pattern for a badge for this um, cross-stitch summer camp. Um, she encourages it, you to make it in colors that you like and that you're a fan of. It's a little camper, and she says we're going glamping this year during the summer. I like glamping. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so you can find all the information on her website under the What's New tab, and we'll link you to her website also. So here's what happens. Every month when you start a project, you show you post a photo on Instagram of your supplies, your floss, your fabric, and just the cover of your pattern that you're going to use. So that posting enters you to win prizes mm -hmm. for just starting. Mm -hmm. Now, if you finish your project by the end of the month and you post the finished project, finished cross stitch. It doesn't have to be fully finished, but if you post the finished stitching, that also enters you again into prize drawings. So June is for stitching something that celebrates a holiday. Mm -hmm. And we're going to show you, yeah, we're going to show you um, a pattern and mm -hmm. it's a freebie. Okay. Well, yeah. This Good is thing. from Helen D. Yeah. Helen D. 
And this is the pattern. It's a nice little 4th of July. You can pattern. see a picture of it stitched up on her site. Right. Um, yeah, I, I didn't print them out. This is a start. I'm going to just throw this in as yeah. a quick whip. I just, I got a quick start. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a start. It's a start. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, that's, but I'm, yeah, this is not part of my camp. I just got excited and wanted to start this one, so. But that is what I'm going to stitch for okay. June. Uh, you may remember I participated in winter cross-stitch yes. camp. And this is what I stitched. You can see it's not fully finished because I have not found the frame I want. So um, I bought some paint now <laughs> to make the frame I want. But anyway, this was a real, really tough one to get finished in time for the winter camp because I, I think it was in January. Yeah, January, I remember. Yeah. And it was, it's a little more stitching. It's a lot of stitching yeah, in there. Than, yeah. So I'm going to take it easy on myself this time and I'm going to stitch uh, summer related things there in the three months. So July is stitching something that will be finished other than in a frame. Right. So Mary has an idea what she might do. I think I'm going to try this. It's called Gilly, it's by Gilly Flower, right? Or no, it's called Gilly Flower Biscorno and Pin Keep. I'm sorry. It's by October House Fiber Arts. So it looks, I hope that's not too much glare. I'm sorry. It's a simple, well, so Mary's going to make the Biscorno. Yeah, I'd love to make the Biscorno. So I'll get this, hopefully get that stitching done in July. It looks like a, a fairly, <laughs> I'll say this fairly um, simple, I won't say simple, easier pattern to stitch. It's not full of all kinds of, you know, it's just Things, solid yeah. cover. Yeah. I mean, you know, what am I it's trying to say? Solid. Yeah. Yeah. Full coverage on the little piece. So, so anyway, yeah. it looks cute. And I'd, I've been wanting to make a Biscorno for quite a while. Quite a while. She talks about it a lot. But <laughs> I just haven't done it. <laughs> she's been trying to get me to make one. I'm kind of like, mm, you, you go talk. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do it. <laughs> you go ahead. So that'll be definitely a new finish for both of us, um, but definitely for Mary. And it won't yeah. go in a frame, so it'll qualify for July. Right. August is try something new. Right. So Sherry talks about the fact it can be a new designer, mm -hmm. a new kind of thread. Maybe you've never stitched with silk thread and you'd like to try that. It could be a new cross stitch fabric, or you could even try some new stitches that you've not done before. That's always fun to learn some new stitches. Yep. I am going to probably pick a designer um, that I haven't stitched before, but I don't I got time to think about that. What about you? Yeah. Have you thought about anything like that yet? Got no. No? Okay. Not that far along in my thinking. I uh, think I'm doing good. I figured out June. <laughs> okay. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So if you check out um, Sherry's Plus Tube uh -huh. 26A, you will um, learn all the hashtags that she needs you to use in the Instagram posts so that she can see your posts and enter you into the appropriate drawings. So check it out. Mary and I are both going to participate, mm -hmm. and that should be lots of fun. Definitely. Definitely. We'd love to know um, if you're going to participate. Check it out, like she said, if you want to, and, and we'd like to see what you're working on or hear, yeah. about, how about, hear about your selections to work on. That should be fun. Okay. So we don't have any fully finished cross-stitch. However, the Fat Quarter Shop came out with this um, thing called super easy zipper pouch tutorial for beginners. <laughs> well, now who could read this super easy pouch, you know? <laughs> All right, so um, they're kind of addictive. <laughs> so I stitched a bunch. You can use a layer cake and you use one piece from a layer cake for the outside and one for the inside. They're the perfect size for your floss mm -hmm. if you don't want it to get all messed up in your project bag. Put an easy little zipper in here. I hope you're not scared of zippers. I'm not. I can do a zipper a hundred times. So this pink one is definitely for me. It's got quilt pattern stuff on the outside of it. And here's a yellow one with a pretty little green flower on the inside. Too cute. Okay, a stitcher's heart loves this. Tape <laughs> measures. And then we have some pretty flowers on the inside. And this lovely little turquoise flower. One and little turquoise 
flowers inside. And this one I'm giving to Mary. And I love it. Because <laughs> Mary loves turquoise. <laughs> I love it. Then we have this last one, which is going to be the giveaway. Yeah, it's beautiful. Look at the inside, yeah. inside, it's little dandelions mm -hmm. without any flower petals left. Too cute. So this is a print with dandelions, and then you know how they get the little wispy things that we all like to blow on and scatter the seeds everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. and make many more dandelions. <laughs> <laughs> so this will be our giveaway today. I love it. All righty. So let's see. Um, that's the only fully finished items we have, mm -hmm. but we do have some whips. Mary? Yeah, I have a, let me show this real fast. I have a fully, I have oh, a you jackpot. Have a finish. That's it's a right. finish. It's not fully. So I finished this. That's right. um, be nice or buzz off. Yay. Yay. This was the pattern by Primrose Cottage Stitches. I stitched it on 14 count cloud. It's a white um, and light blue variegated, what do you call that? Modeled? Modeled. Modeled fabric. Mm -hmm. I bought this at Stitcher's Paradise. Here in Las Vegas, that's our local um, cross-stitch shop. So anyway, finished it. I'll figure out how to finish it, uh, fully finish it. I just haven't done that yet. I didn't have time. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is what the pattern looks like. This is my beat up copy. I work from copies because I tend to tear things up and just, you know, fold and bend. Yeah, and... I do too. And Mary and I carry our stitching back and forth to work so that sometimes we can stitch at lunchtime and yeah, they get a little beat up. Sometimes I find I haven't made a copy of the pattern. I'm like, darn, it does get a little beat up. Yeah. That's... So anyway. Yeah. So now whips. we're on whips. Okay. I don't, I don't feel like I got hard. I don't have, I did not get much stitching time in this last couple of weeks, which I'm still trying to figure out. It was busy. Mary had yeah, a lot of evening had, activities after work, so yeah, she didn't have a lot of time, and I had some other things going on. So yeah, it's kind of busy. We're just kind of busy. So we are both working, and it's okay to show this, right? You think? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, the Fat Quarter Shop has um, Summer Home. It's a mystery pattern. It's coming out in five parts. The fourth part just came out yesterday, and so this is it. You can go on to Fat Quarter Shop and. Buy the pattern and download it if you want, and they will give you this, you know, part four and then part five will come out next week. Or you can just wait till the whole thing comes out and buy the pattern. It doesn't really. Mm -hmm. And the supplies are listed. Gail and I are doing a, um, a smidgen, make, have a few different changes on each one of ours. This is as far as I've gotten because I last week was the third week and the house came out. I wasn't ready. I just kind of got stitched across the top, the home, and uh, started on the little um, words underneath. And then I thought, I want to see what the house looks like. <laughs> so I did, and we, you know, came out. It's really cute. So I'll, I'm going to work on this this week, I hope. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm stitching mine on, I don't know if you can get a good check, good look at that or not. 14 count Ada. It is the um, gray gingham, light gray gingham. Uh -huh. And I'm happy with that. It's really pretty. It's not a huge pattern. It's not, you know, I don't think it'll be... Forgot mine. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. So she got, and I did one little change here, and I don't know if I have it with. I don't know. I took the colors they had, and they they um suggested a turquoise here. I went with a smidge and deeper color, just because I wanted a little bit brighter. You really can't see it very well in this light, but it is a little bit deeper. Not a lot, but I wanted to try that. So I'm gonna play around with the house, and it won't be solid. Um, what I'm thinking about doing is using one strand of this darker color and one strand of the color they suggested and seeing what that does just for just for a change. Um, I don't, I'm not changing um, the colors or anything around the house. I'm just going to go with what they suggest. So that's it. Okay, so Gail, give us a report. All right, so here's mine. And I put it on timeout this week because... <laughs> I made a mistake right here, and I have duplicate, um, duplicate row. So Mary and I have puzzled over this, and um, we think it's going to be okay, so I'll probably continue on with it. It's a lot of stitching to take out to fix that mistake. So we're going to... She can just do the same. She's got basically an extra row over here. Yeah. She can do the next row here. And it'll still, the lining of this bottom part of the border will come out. Um, I don't think that'll really be a problem at all. So, yeah, 
Yes. I'll have an extra row at the bottom be between the border and the house, but it doesn't bother me. Mm, who cares? Yeah. So yes, I'm doing mine on painted wood. Is that? The yeah, one? it's called white. I think it's called white pine. Is that oh yeah, sense? you're right. Does that remember? White pine. It's, it's a 14, 14 count, count white mm -hmm. pine. We both got the fabrics from Fat Quarter Shop and, right. and the flosses too. Right. So I guess this can come out of time out. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes things have to be there. They have to go, and you have to you yeah. know, think through things. Did you do your red houses? No. I haven't gotten very far, but I think I mentioned this before. This is a pattern called Little Red Schoolhouse, and Dale got it for me. Um, and it's by Darlene Dion Designs, and it's just perfect. It's so, so cute. I love it. I got a start on it. Uh, I really haven't gotten any farther than I was before, but got a, a, a maybe a little bit more. I don't know if I got another house or if I just started that fifth one. I don't remember. It's fine. Um, this is on 14 count um, white chocolate Ada. So, Something that sounds good right about Yeah, it now. does. It's white chocolate. You know, when you name um, <laughs> things with food, it's like, wow. What a great name for that. We're silly, I know. <laughs> All right, so I have one whip. And this is going to be one of the Fat Quarter Shop Petite Stitches Itty Baskets. Bitty okay. basket. Bitty basket. Yes. Right. Love it. And the patterns are free. So I'm stitching this Independence Day heart. Um, you can download the patterns free from their website. It is stitched on a 10 count. And I think it's called Farmhouse. I forgot my card telling me which one. Looks like that. It's either Farmhouse or Buttermilk, one of the two. Okay. I love the gingham. Um, heart the gingham yeah, blue. I think this that's could be really cute. Adorable. So the blue, I'm using the called for colors, but it the blue is a lot darker than oh. it looks like on the pattern. Yeah, I figured you picked a deeper color. Mm -hmm. you? No, that's the called for okay. blue. So cool. very good. Anyway, that should be done very shortly, and I'm looking forward to having another little item for Fourth of July. Too cute. Yeah. What now, else? you're not going to believe this, but neither one of us have any stash enhancement this time. It's a shocker. <laughs> I did buy some um, sticky boards from the Fat Quarter Shop, and I bought a Stitching with the Housewives pattern with that order. I can't find it anywhere. I, I don't know where it went. I it's know. hiding. I hate those safe places. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when that shows itself again, we'll show you what that looks like. But I am feeling a need for a trip to um, Stitcher's Paradise. Uh, yeah, we connect because I was thinking the same thing. It's time to go. Time to go. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. We did not have a giveaway in our last video. Yes. Okay, let me explain the last video. Um, we didn't even say anything about the giveaway we had before. I don't, we, forgot, we just went yeah. blanked over that. So I apologize for that. I should have been on top. Um, what we were giving away, and let me find it down what I do with it. Did I pull it out? It is, well, well, it's this one. I have the nice, I have. we have a nice pattern. The, we have the purchased yeah. pattern. Yeah, for this one. Yeah. No. Um, so we're giving this away. Well, we um, made it our giveaway in the video before, and we didn't announce the winner. The winner is Norma Hansen. So, Norma, I'm sorry um, that we did not um, announce that and that you had to wait another two weeks to find out that you won the pattern. Um, I sent you a, a message back on our YouTube, responded to your YouTube, but I don't know if you were able to see that or not. So we wanted to make sure you had a chance to claim this prize. So Norma, please email us at um, neonnightstitchers at gmail.com. That's all, neonnightstitchers is all one word, lowercase. And give us your address. Um, I'm assuming we're assuming you're over 18. Please let us know, um, and we can I can get that mailed out to you right away. So congratulations, and I apologize. <laughs> Neither one of us thought of it. We just we weren't going from our notes too well last mm, time. We didn't do so good. Yeah. So do you want to talk about the new yes. question and giveaway? Oh, what's our new question? <laughs> I didn't see this before. So to win. What did you call this? It, the very easy zipper pouch. Zipper pouch, perfect for your floss or your other stitching implements. Very pretty. Yeah, this is really good. So, do you think the body found in, in um, the barrel that 
that was in Lake Mead is a mob hit or is it something else? Use mob in your comment or other, depending on your opinion. We can't wait to read these comments. <laughs> yeah. So you can create your own true crime story. <laughs> <laughs> now, I hope no one thinks we're being insensitive no, about this. No, not really. But... How can you live in Vegas? We've both lived in Vegas for quite a long time. I've lived here for 23 years, almost 23 and a half. Um, Mary's lived here. 18. 18. And, you know, we've lived with the stories of the mob, and I worked at a hotel casino here in town, and we know about skimming, we know about cheaters, we know about the rumors that they took uh, cheaters out and shot them in the desert, them, or if they couldn't pay their debts, if they had gambled and lost more than they could pay, yeah, they shot them in the desert. They liked, according to everything we've read, they liked to keep these things away from the strips so they would go out to the desert or other places and well there are no other places too much here it's all desert <laughs> but there is the lake uh and they would take care of business out there so we don't we hope you don't think we're being insensitive because obviously someone did die here yeah, that, yeah. and we're of course very sorry for that person and the family uh we don't even know if it's male or female yet no we don't know that so yet. yeah, yeah. We have a mob museum here if you're in Vegas and you're interested in the mob. Yeah, There's also a mob tour where you can see um, locations where different things happened. I've never been on the mob tour. I've been to the mob museum. It's kind of interesting. And they do have a bar downstairs <laughs> in, case you're, in case you're in town. Right. <laughs> um, so to win, you need to say either mob or other. Other. And you need to be over 18. Please uh -huh. don't mention giveaway in your comment. And be a subscriber and like this video. Yeah. So now let's talk about free patterns. Okay. Boy, have we got free patterns. Yeah. All right. So we showed you the first one by Helen D. Uh -huh. And we will put a link to her floss tube. Um, in her comments, in her floss tube, she has a link to Linktree where she has several freebie patterns. So 4th of July, she has um, she has a beach one, I believe. Yes. I can't remember what the other there ones are. There was a are. summer one. Yeah, something. Anyway, she's um, she's got a few. So, yeah, check it out. And so, she does some tutorials for finishing that are amazing. Uh, yeah, they're very good tutorials, yeah. Um, cross... Colorado Cross Stitcher has this free badge for um, camp, mm -hmm. Cross Stitch Camp this summer. And this is what I was telling you. She's encouraging you to use your own colors for the little camper and make it your own. You could put your own silhouette here, <laughs> your dog, your cat, significant other, whatever. That's too cute. And it's on her website under the What's New section. Okay. So, again, we'll link you to that. Because I'm on this pinker and pumpkin pinker and pumpkin quilting um kick they have so many free patterns we cannot get over how many free patterns they have it's amazing they have this adorable gold house bee skeps blackbirds big beautiful flowers bee <laughs> another bee another crow uh more choo, flowers choo. this is just lovely i think i might stitch one of these designs in in camp there you this go. summer there you yeah go. Mm -hmm. there's one i'm just crazy about that we showed in the last video with the little bees and the little bee skeps and i'm just crazy about that one now if you subscribe to hands-on design and her newsletter she has a pattern called summer breeze i know it's not very big and it's very hard to see but it has um the word summer breeze and it has some flip-flops has a pail and some little shovels for digging in the sand it has some water and the fish in the water and it's a real cute little design um, we will link you to her floss tube and you can sign up for her newsletter there right so let's see um that's all the cross stitch related stuff right? uh -huh, uh -huh. okay so the next thing we're going to tell you about is this really good book that I picked up at Barnes & Noble not too long ago. It's called The Overnight Guest by Heather Gudenkoff. She's much better at those uh, names I, uh, than me. <laughs> well, we hope. <laughs> uh, I just couldn't put it down. 
I read it that night after I picked it up that afternoon, that night. And then the morning I got up and I read it again. It was a weekend. Thank goodness. (laughs) (laughs) It's a suspense story Mm -hmm. about this woman who is staying in a home and uh, it's very bad weather, snowstorm. She's staying by herself just for some time away. And she discovers a child outside, a young child outside in this horrible snowstorm. So it's a suspense story, and I liked it so much, I gave it to Mary and said, oh, I think you're going to enjoy this. So did you enjoy it? I did. I really did. It's a good story. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I, I'm not good at explaining that. You know, Gail can tell you about the book like she did. So I, I really enjoyed it. Just a good story to follow. It was fun to read. Yeah. So we have one more friend we're going to give this yes. to yes. and see if she enjoys it as much as we did. Okay, so now we're going to go on to quilting. So if you don't want to hear about quilting, yeah, we'll see you next okay. time and enjoy your stitches. Yes. All right, Mary, so you're going to talk about our quilt that we're making. Okay, we mentioned it last time. It yeah. is, um, the, we were going to start it, Missouri Star Quilt Company. Um, you can watch a video, you can buy the pattern. It's called So Many Squares. And so you buy, you buy a print jelly roll, and then you buy a solid one or one that goes with um, the print you buy. Um, And then you sew these into strips this way. So here's a sample of what I'm working on. So I'm just showing a piece of it. So you're Mm -hmm. showing the background is what this one is. I didn't pick a solid, but I picked a small, um, like a turquoise polka dot, dot, and it it goes with the The prints. The prints, yeah. So you sew light, dark, you know, light print, light print, light print. I'll say that. Background. Four print. prints, four yeah. background there you strips. Go. And then and when so you, you have a very long that's piece. Half of it. So yes. you have a long piece. Very there long, long piece. Long, okay, there you go. Very long, long at the end. <laughs> so then um, So you when, sew ten of these, right? Yeah, you sew ten, ten strips of these. of these. So you have enough in with both jelly rolls to do this. Um, or you can, you don't have to buy the second jelly roll. You can buy yardage and cut it into your strips, which is actually yes. what I did. And I did too. So Mary's is a, a white background with a teal or turquoise polka dot on mm-hmm. it. And mine is a white background with um, different shades of pink confetti like stuff on it. It's really pretty. So you, when you watch the Missouri Star tutorial, they kind of t- give you some hit tips and hints on sewing these together and how to place them. Um, and then, you know, so that just helps with your sewing. Um, then you take these and you take each strip, strip set, and you're going to cut it into two and a half strip, two and a half inch strips across. Across. So, so we'll yeah. show you that so let me show you this. So here's, I haven't sewn them all together, but here we go. So one of these. So this is what it looks like when you put them next to each other. So that's one strip, right? And so then you lay them out so that they alternate, you know, print next to your polka dot or to your solid, whatever your background is. And it creates a checkerboard. Mm -hmm. And then, so one strip, how many, we get 16 out of one Mm -hmm. strip set. And so then you take this, I've only got five across, we should have eight across, correct? If I remember right. So then you're going to sew 16 of these sets 16 together. blocks. And then you're just going to put them together and sew those blocks into your quilt. So this is actually going to make a pretty good sized quilt. But this is what we did last Saturday. We spent the day sewing together. Um, Until and, my neck hurts so bad that I couldn't <laughs> sew anymore. Yeah, we were like, okay, that's enough. So that's how far we've gotten. We're kind of excited about it. Oh, okay, I'll show you that. Yeah, so this is a little bit bigger piece of Mary's background fabric. So when we get the really everything cute. pieced together, there will be a two and a half inch border around the whole, squ- you know, square quilt piece, top. the little quilt top. Then there will be a six, no, six inch border with one of the prints that just happened to be in that um, fabric line. Yeah, that fabric line I really liked. And then I bought a turquoise to go with it. That'll just be the binding. So we're excited. We really like these. Tell you, I'm gonna tell you oh, the yeah. fabric line just. We did mention it last week, yeah. but uh, last time, I'm sorry. It's called Chicka Doodle Doo, and it's from um, Sherry, somebody. It's called Farm Fresh. There you go. Boy, it's got a long name here. 
Farm Collection Fresh from the Field by Sherry McCulley Studio for Poppy Cotton 2021. So just remember chickadoodle-doo chick if you're interested in the uh, jelly roll or if you're interested in any of the yardage. This, these prints come, there's a lot of these prints yeah. in our local quilt store. So there's turquoise, there's yellow, there's black, there's pink, there's red. Yeah. So you have a lot of different choices for um, your outer borders. Right, right, right. And Gail anyway. and I are excited to see how ours look because I have the turquoise polka dots and she's got the pink, multicolored, like multi-pink um, background. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of excited to see. They're going to look different. They're going to look so yes. different. So anyway, just a fun quilt project. Yes, we're enjoying that. We uh, have a tendency to quilt a lot in the summer because it's just too hot to go out and do anything. Yeah, you want to do anything. Yeah, uh, which seems kind of odd. It seems counterintuitive, but we make a lot of quilt tops in the uh, summer, and then we get them quilted by one of our local long arm quilt stores that offers long arm quilt quilting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, we'll link you to the Missouri Star video, and they have the pattern available on their website in case you're interested in this. Thank you for staying with us through the quilting. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to our channel. Mm -hmm. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and enjoy your stitching time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.